Okay, team, here's what's been happening on Ghost Rider. The facts. First, Rob's good friend Double T is in danger. Double T is a poet. He's also homeless. Rob met him at the youth center. Now, Rob's looking everywhere for Double T, but he's not alone. Double T's daughter, Lisa, is on the trail with Rob. And, even though Rob said he doesn't really need their help, the team's on the case, too, searching for Double T. Here's what the team knows so far. Double T was a soldier in the Vietnam War. He's looking for a light at a long tunnel's end. He wants to lay a flame near sacred names, and he bought some incense, then headed for the subway. Now, here's some new facts from the last show. First, the team looked for Double T at South Ferry. That's the end of the subway tunnel. But he wasn't there. Where's Double T? And Rob and Lisa talked to a friend of Double T's named Hush. Hush told them about a subway tunnel he and Double T used to sleep in at night. Be careful. Rob doesn't think it's a good idea to go to the tunnel because it sounds dangerous. Look, Rob, it took two days to find help in the shelter. The VA could not do anything at all. I have to leave tomorrow. There's no time. But it looks like Rob was right. First, he loses his ghostwriter pen, and then... Then, the team gets another message from Ghost Rider. This is important. Double T was a soldier in Vietnam. And this letter is from a soldier in Vietnam. Somehow, Vietnam must be connected to where Double T went and why he went there. Can the team figure out the clues and track down Double T? And what about Rob and Lisa? Rob's trying to write to Ghost Rider, but can Ghost Rider read the message? Get a pencil in your casebook out and keep track of the clues, because Rob's in trouble and the team's on the case. Soldier in Vietnam, gonna help us find where Double T is now. down in my casebook. Oh, man, Rob's in trouble. Do you think he's with Double T? No. If he was, Ghost Rider would read the letter that Double T's carrying around. Rob probably ran into some trouble trying to find Double T. Then the best way to help Rob is to get to Double T. Then maybe he can tell us where Rob might have gone to look for him. Dear Tom, no heroes like on TV. I'm writing this down. Look! Cars are flying from all over the world! December 8th, 1971. Dear soldier friend, Look, another message! Quick, write it down. One thing I don't do is worry. It doesn't pay. Johnny.
us put everything we know together. Wherever double T is, he's someplace where there are a bunch of letters. Mm -hmm. And it seems like all these letters are written by soldiers or to soldiers. Wow, this letter is really old. It's written in 1971. The one I copied was written way back in 1968. Wait a minute. Do you guys remember when we looked up Vietnam War? Mm -hmm. Vietnam War, 1957 to 1975. All these letters were written by soldiers way back then. They must have been in Vietnam like Double T. Gabby, do you still have Jamal's New York Times book? Uh-huh. Look for anything at all having to do with Vietnam. Buy the South Ferry. Hey, you guys, you wouldn't believe. The Vietnam Veterans Memorial, page 257. Does it say what it is? I mean, is it a statue or what? Hold on a sec. Oh, this is going to blow you away. Read it. The Vietnam Veterans Memorial is covered with letters written by soldiers in the war. The letters are engraved in green glass. That's it. All those letters that Ghost Rider read that were near Double T. Means he's at the Vietnam Memorial. Let's go. The faster we find Double T, the sooner we'll be able to help Rob. Tell she go to Port of Spain. Tell Ancillo the baby's walking by carnival. Sure. <laughs> yes. Hey, a dog. Jamal, you know you don't put a foot out of this house on Saturdays until your chores are done. Sorry, Dad. They better be done before you leave this house again. Yes, sir. La la la, la la la, a la la. Lunch will be served in the dining room. Yeah, assuming that we'll still be able to afford to eat. That man has been on the phone long distance for almost an hour. It's the least I could do for a new friend. Is that a new hairstyle? New hairstyle, new attitude, new everything. <laughs> I should have never come to New York. What a stupid idea! Why'd you come now? Well, I'm gonna be graduating from high school with honors. And I wanted so badly to find my dad so that he could be there. Maybe. Well, I'm never gonna get the chance. I'm not gonna listen to that, Lisa. We have to believe there's a light at the end of the tunnel. The tunnel caved in, remember? There is no tunnel. There's no light at the end. It's real simple. Well, I'm not going to sit here and complain. I'm not giving up. Vietnam Veterans Memorial. Hold it, muchachos. Not so fast. Si, papa, pero... It's double T, papa, remember? Rob's friend who's lost. We think he's at the Vietnam Memorial. Why don't we make a deal? You help me with the store today, and tomorrow we'll all make a trip to the Vietnam Memorial. No, papa, we have to go today, or else he won't be there. I need you in the store today. Now, Alejandro... Take those boxes back into the storeroom. Gabriela, arrange the cat food cans, huh? People get so messy. What are we going to do? Double T probably won't be there tomorrow. I don't understand why we always have to work in this dumb store all the time. Yeah, and this is something educational. We can't get out of working for anything. Hey, that's it. Do you still have that New York Sites book? Maybe we can convince Papa that the Vietnam Veterans Memorial is educational. And he'll let us go. Brilliant. Let's take another look at this book. Here it is. The Vietnam Veterans Memorial, a 14-foot-high monument built by the city in 1985, now stands here at the foot of a brick amphitheater. Yeah, and I got more stuff about the war in my casebook. Quick, here he comes. Remember, stick to the point. Right, educational. 
Come on, hijos, we have lots to do. Uh, please, Papa, give us another chance to convince you about the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. Yes, it's a very educational place. Oh, really? See, it's 14 feet tall and covered with letters written by soldiers. And we can read the letters and learn about the war. Yes, but I and still... And we know they... that the war lasted from 1957 to 1975. The U.S. sent a lot of soldiers there. That's right. And by reading the letters, it'll teach us what it was like to be a soldier in the war. Yeah. Like one of the letters says, One thing I don't do is worry. It doesn't pay. Johnny. Huh. Well, I can see that you have studied about this war. And since you're so interested, it might be good for you to learn more about it. Please, Papa. Our friends are going today. And we'll clean the store top to bottom tomorrow. Promise. All right. All right. You know, it's the little bits of celery that gave the tuna its beauty. And how did you know that arugula was Winston's favorite vegetable? He told me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're something. <laughs> well, we thank you for that wonderful lunch. Oh, you are yes, very welcome. And I'm glad you got a chance to talk to your daughter. Oh, you know, I'll pay for the charges. Oh, no, that phone call was a present from me. <coughs> oh, uh, <clears throat> thank you. And pleased to make you our acquaintance. And you too, Jamal. Well, let's go, old chap. Bye-bye, yes. Winston. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> thank you. Um, I'll see you later tonight, Bertrand. Yes, Cecilia. We'll dance until dawn. <laughs> J-O. J-O. Now, who was that man? What's that supposed to mean? I introduced you. But what do you know about him? Well, I know he's one of the most charming gentlemen I've met in many a day. I'll tell you what I know. I know he hogged the phone, and he hogged the food, and his bad breath dog hogged the couch. And now he's hogging your time, and you hardly know anything about him. No, 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 no I'm not letting you go out with this guy. Let me tell you something, Reginald Harmony Jenkins. The next time you think about not letting me do something, you better make sure I'm in a diaper and crawling around on all fours. And another thing, both of you, you were both rude to my guests. No, we weren't. Oh, the way you rushed through lunch and then jumped up from the table as soon as you were done. The dog Winston had better manners. I couldn't even understand half the things he was saying. If you had paid attention, you would have understood every word and begun to appreciate the beauty of Bertrand's accent. Bertrand? Yes, Bertrand. I think it's a lovely name. Well, I think you should just step back and see how ridiculous you're acting. Look, I've been a mother since the day you were born and a grandmother since Denitra and Jamal came into this world. But I have always been a human being. And as a human being, I have a right to live my life the way I see fit. And that includes choosing my own friends. You're right. We're sorry. Aren't we, Jamal? Yeah. Grandma, listen. I'm really sorry. The person you need to apologize to lives across the street. Apologize to Bertrand, and then you'll be square with me. Okay. Okay, you got it. Don't worry, Grandma, we will. Thank you.
Dear Mom, I'd give just about anything for a hot bath, some clean clothes, and a cold drink of good old New York City water. Love, Ray, Sergeant Raymond Wall, AmeriCal Division, Chu Lai. This must be where Double T is somewhere. Double T! Found you! What? How come you're here? Why'd you disappear? Where's Rob? Rob? What about Rob? Why did I tell anybody what was going on? At least Stacy. She's the girl that I was staying with. I mean, if Stacy knew, I could at least make believe that she'd be looking. I didn't tell anybody either. I have these buddies. Man, they were really hanging in there for me. They really want to have... And I just turned my back on them. Why'd I do it? Yeah, why? It's me. That's the way I am. My dad moved us around a lot, because he's in the Air Force, you know? Every time I met people, we moved. So it made it kind of hard to make friends. I guess I just got used to being alone. And here are these guys really hanging in there for me, and what do I do? Turn my back on them. What's going on? Well, see, we're friends of Rob's. And he's looking for you real bad. Why? Well, he went to meet you yesterday, and you weren't there. Ah, uh, something went down. He said it looked real bad. Your cart was turned over, your broom was broken in two, your notebook was all ripped up, and he got scared. Look, just tell Rob I'm doing okay, all right? But he's out there looking for you. With Lisa. Lisa? She came to find you. That's what I was afraid of. We know she's your daughter. Yeah. My daughter, look. When you see her, you just tell her... Tell her... I'm sorry. Huh? See, I, I kind of went off that night. I, I lost it. I, I, I broke up my stuff. You did it? But why? You kids better move on. We can't. See, Rob and Lisa left real early this morning, and we haven't seen them since. We think they're in trouble. What? It might be serious. We know Rob needs help because we... Oh, we, we heard from him, and Lisa's with him. Can you think of a place they might have gone to look for you? Why should I? Rob, look around you. We're doomed. The shelter is the only place I can think of where they might have gone. But why would they be in trouble in a shelter? Tunnel! Yeah, I was just going to be tunnel. What? Could Rob and Lisa be looking for you in a tunnel? Why do you think they're in a tunnel? Uh, Rob mentioned something about a tunnel before he left. Tunnel? S-32. Does S-32 mean anything? Maybe it's something written near the tunnel. Hold on a minute. That number... the number up on the wall in the subway tunnel where we used to sleep me and a guy named Hush we haven't slept there in a long time though what made you think of that no time to explain let's check it out uh, can't the city shut that entrance about nine months ago after they started construction Then how did Rob and Lisa get inside? Maybe there's another way in. 
Let's call Jamal. His dad works for the subway. Maybe he can help us. I saw a public phone over there. Come on. Alex, um, I'm going to wait here with him. I'll wait with you. All right. Keep an eye on him. I'll watch you guys from across the street. Aren't you ready to give that up yet? Do you see any vibes coming in here to get us out? Because I sure don't. Look, I want to tell you a story, all right? A story? Give me a break. Will you listen? Why? What good is some fairy tale story going to do us now? Just listen, all right? There once was a little boy in Alaska who rode off on his father's dog sled without permission, and he got lost. Even the sled and the dogs got away from him. He was frightened and all alone, and the wind was blowing fiercely. In his mind's eye, the boy could see his family sitting around a warm fire, thinking and worrying about their missing son. It made him feel less afraid. He started to talk to them out loud as if they were there with him. He told them how sorry he was and how much he missed them. The howling north wind heard the boy's words and was moved by them. She told him to keep talking and promised to help him. The north wind carried the words all the way back to the igloo and blew them into his father's ear. As the night and the stars began to fill the freezing sky, the boy struggled to stay awake. He kept talking through his chattering teeth. All of a sudden, he heard his father's voice calling. Through the darkness, the boy could almost see a figure and a dog sled in the distance. The north wind had kept her promise and led his father to it. Without a word, he lifted his son into the sled, covered him with fur blankets, and headed for home. The boy whispered, thank you, to the north wind, closed his eyes, and fell into a deep, safe sleep. What a great story. Where's it from? Me. You made that up? Yeah, I wrote it. You're a really good writer. Thanks. Yes! All right, come on now. Who's that caller? Lenny and Alex. Dad? Uh-huh. Oh, look at that hit! Oh, get it? Get it? Yay! He caught it. Dad. Yeah. They think someone's trapped in the subway tunnels. Oh, no, that's unlikely, son. It's Rob, that new kid. You don't know him, but Dad, they need your help. You have a map of the subway tunnels, don't you? Oh, well, those tunnels run all through the city. It would be almost impossible to locate somebody. What makes you think he's down there? Uh, Alex got a message. Would S-32 help you locate where he is? Well, S-32 would give us a general area. But how did you come up with that? Rob, he said something about before he left. Well, I've got some maps down in the basement. But if somebody is really stuck down there, I hope they stay in one place. I mean, it would be hard enough tracking them down even if they do. Never thought of that. I'd be right there. You're from Vietnam, aren't you? My parents are. My brother was born there, too. But I was born here. I was the first one in our family born in America. Why are you homeless? It just happened. After I got back from the war, I just didn't fit in. I felt like I didn't know anybody anymore. Not even my own family. Because you felt bad from the war? Yeah. Mostly. So... I took off after a while, split, ran away. 
We've got a plan. Let's go meet at Jamal's. His dad's gonna help us find Rob and Lisa. Let's go. 